This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. That really wonderful TV year, 1982. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. So I've collected TV Guide fall preview issues over the years and thought it would be fun to talk about which shows made it in a particular year, which shows didn't, and which ones we actually watched. Mm -hmm. I have to give credit, of course, to Ken Reed's TV Guidance Counselor podcast for the idea because he does a bit where they pick out a random TV guide and talk about it. Mm -hmm. 1982 Fall TV actually had a very good track record. Far more hits, at least shows that made it to multiple seasons, than misses. In fact, this was the embryonic year of NBC's dominance uh, that we always called must-see TV. So, TV Guide included four shows as early starters. So, these were the mid-season replacements that aired before the fall. You, now, they count those as like the tag end of the season, don't exactly. they? Exactly. Yeah. So, um, those shows were Joni Loves Chachi on ABC, which was the Happy Days spinoff with Scott Bio and Aaron Moran. It did very well at first due to the Happy Days lead-in, but then dropped off quickly. Bio and Moran returned to the mothership for its final season... Uh, this did run for two seasons, 17 episodes total. I watched a couple episodes. Yeah, I don't think I ever watched it. I was, was pretty, pretty much done with Happy Days by that point. Well, and this was a pretty dry period of television for me because I was in college. Hmm. 9 to 5 ABC, based on the movie, and we know how well that usually goes. Rachel Dennison, who's Dolly's actual sister, hmm. plays her role in the, in the TV show. Rena Moreno covers the Lily Tomlin, Tomlin role, and Valerie Curtin, who's the cousin of SNL's Jane, wow. covers the Jane Fonda role. Has she been in anything else? Mm, not much. She okay. did. I think she did more writing than okay. otherwise. Jeffrey Tambor, who we now know from Transparent, mm -hmm. and then Peter Bonners played the boss. Mm -hmm. In season two, Curtin was replaced by Leah Ayers, the show was canceled after that, but then moved to syndication from 86 to 88, which is something you saw a lot in the late 80s, where they took a show that, that had been canceled on network TV and said, oh, we can continue it in syndication, mm -hmm. and because of the better deal that way, you actually can continue to make money on it. Sally Struthers, who we'll hear about in a moment, took over the Moreno role, and most of the supporting cast changed. 82 episodes total. Wow. That's <laughs> unbelievable. A show familiar to many of us, T.J. Hooker on ABC, William Shatner in his second most famous role, with Adrian's Med and Heather Locklear as eye candy. Remember, we're still in ABC's Jiggle TV era. There were also new episodes shot as part of CBS's Crime Time After Prime Time. Yes. So there were five seasons and 91 episodes. Cagney and Lacey, CBS, the classic women's police drama. Now, this had a very strange metamorphosis over the years. It started with Loretta Swit playing Cagney hmm. and Tyne Daly playing Lacey in a TV movie slash backdoor pilot. Huh. Is that still available? I might uh, like to see it, that. I think it might be. The show was greenlit, but the MASH producers wouldn't let Swit out of her contract. Oh. So season one Cagney was Meg Foster who was replaced for playing it too aggressive, a.k.a. lesbian. <laughs> Sharon Gless then took over the role, who had to get out of her long-term Universal contract. She's the last actress who had one of the classic studio contract player contracts. Wow. Yeah. She had a 10-year contract with Universal starting in the 70s, early 70s. The show was canceled after the second season. But a letter-writing campaign saved it. Uh, Daly and Gless won six Emmys over seven seasons and 125 episodes, and four TV movies followed. And, boy, they're iconic now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Saturday. So we're now, now into the fall. Into the fall. Okay. We're into the fall. On Saturday, we had Silver Spoons on NBC with Ricky Schrader, Joel Higgins, and Aaron Gray. So a millionaire man-child with a smart son who helps dad through life. There's a whole will-they-or-won't-they thing between Higgins and Gray that finally ends in marriage. 
And it ran for five seasons, 116 episodes, including a year in syndication. I never watched that. <laughs> I don't think I ever did either. The Devlin Connection, NBC, with Rock Hudson and Jack Scalia. A former intelligence officer helps the son he didn't know about with his private eye business. 13 episodes and done. Moving on to Sundays, Ripley's Believe It or Not on ABC. Jack Palance, along with co-hosts Catherine Schiff, Holly Palance, was that his daughter? Yeah. And Marie Osmond, in turn, introduced video packages about weird stuff. This was actually a remake of a 4950 NBC series with the eponymous Ripley hosting, who died of a heart attack during that show's run. It ran from 1982 to 1986, and then another remake from 2000 to 2003 with Dean Cain as the host on TBS. Was this sort of the father of America's Funniest Home Videos, do you think? Um, in, in a way, it certainly predated it. Yeah. Voyagers, NBC. Not to be confused with the Star Trek franchise. This one has an exclamation point. Voyagers. Yeah. John Eric Hexum plays a time traveler who meets a young boy, Mino Palouse, who go off on adventures. If this sounds like watered-down Doctor Who, you're right. The show ran for a season against CBS's 60 Minutes and then was canceled when NBC decided to run a competing news program against 60 Minutes, which flopped. Never a good idea. The next year, Hexum was in a CIA-slash-modeling show called mm -hmm. Cover Up when he accidentally killed himself with a blank round in a prop yeah, gun. Yeah, that was sad. Matt Houston on ABC. Lee Horsley and Pamela Hensley in a Texas Private Eye action series. It was produced by Aaron Spelling at a time when he could greenlight nearly anything. <laughs> Buddy Ebsen joined the cast in its third and last season as Matt's uncle, essentially playing Barnaby Jones. Mm -hmm. Three seasons, 67 episodes total. Gloria, CBS. Norman Lear's attempt to wring out all he could from All in the Family, although he would quickly be pushed out of the production. Hmm. Archie's little girl, Sally Struthers, and little Joey move to suburban New York after ex-husband Mike moves to a commune. Burgess Meredith and Joe DeWinter play veterinarians that Gloria works for. Lear's writing team and Carol O'Connor were cut from the show by new producers because there, there was a proposed pilot with O'Connor in a cameo, which ended up becoming an episode of Archie Bunker's Place. Huh. After all this drama, the show ran for 21 episodes. Yes, I remember it wasn't very good. <laughs> I don't know. On Monday, Square Pegs on CBS. A realistic look at high school cliques and those outside of them. Best remembered as the jumping off point for Sarah Jessica Parker. The show used a lot of popular music at the time, which made later re-releases problematic. The show only lasted one season and 20 episodes, although it's fondly remembered by many. And I did watch Square Pegs. I think I did, too. New Heart, CBS, Bob's major second hit after his 70s eponymous series. Mm -hmm. Bob plays, well, Bob. In this case, an author who buys an old Vermont inn along with wife Mary Fran. As in his earlier series, much of the humor comes out of Bob reacting from cra to crazy people, in this case, all the locals. Mm -hmm. Tom Poston plays Handyman George. Initially, Jennifer Holmes played the maid and Stephen Campman, the owner of a local cafe. Both were dropped after the first season, with Julia Duffy appearing as the new maid. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the show switched from video to film for some reason, but it was still in front of a live TV audience. A new angle is added in Season 2, when Bob becomes the host of a local TV talk show. Peter Scolari joins the cast as his producer and Duffy's boyfriend-slash-husband. I think that's where it got really taken off, right? Yeah. It takes off there. The show gets more and more weird over the run, with William Sanderson, Tony Pappenfuss, and John Volstad arriving as backs backwoodsmen Larry, my brother Daryl, and my other brother Daryl. The two Daryls do not speak until the final episode. Speaking of the final episode, it is widely considered to be the best of all time. I would certainly say that. Bob wakes up in his Chicago bed with previous wife Suzanne Plachette saying he had the strangest dream. Yeah. The show, uh, the 70s the show actually reciprocated this in a 1991 TV reunion movie <laughs> where they analyzed Bob's dream. Uh. Bill Daly, a.k.a. Howard Borden, mentions he had a similar dream oh, where he was no. an astronaut. 
<laughs> and I dream of genie footage is shown. I don't remember that one. Bob steps on the office elevator and runs into repairmen, Larry, Daryl, and Daryl. Oh. <laughs> Newhart ran for eight seasons and 184 episodes. On Tuesdays, bring him back alive on CBS. This doesn't sound familiar to me at all. <laughs> One of two Indiana Jones knockoffs based on the success of the previous year's film, Frank Buck, who is Bruce Boxleitner, a legendary collector of wild animals, has similar adventures as Dr. Jones's. His contact in Singapore is Gloria, played by Cindy Morgan. His faithful sidekick is Ali, played by Clyde Katsatsu. It's partially based on Buck's 1930 book, which generated multiple films. Frank Buck fell not to Nazi saboteurs, but to the combined ratings of Happy Days and the A-Team. There's only 17 episodes. Gallivan, NBC. Not Ro Gallivant. Not Gallivant. <laughs> Robert Urich, just off his Vegas role, is a former CIA agent and oceanographer. Of course, his past comes back to haunt him. Mm -hmm. Kate Reed and Patrick McNee, no stranger to secret agent stuff, round out the cast. 13 episodes and three never aired. Yurik would have another chance in Spencer for Hire. Saint Elsewhere on NBC. This is a big show. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Described as both a medical drama and black comedy, the series helped NBC pull out of a ratings tailspin. It was created by MTM, Mary Tyler Moore, and husband Grant Tinker's production company. It's all about the staff at Saint Elegius, a broken down Boston hospital. There was an enormous cast including Ed Flanders, David Bierney, Ed Begley Jr., Terrence Knox, Howie Mandel, David Morse, Christina Pickles, Cynthia Sykes, Denzel Washington, William Daniels, who was doing double duty for NBC, more on that later, Mark Harmon, Stephen First, Sidney Pickett, and Ronnie Cox. And that's not everybody. That's just the ones you might have actually heard of yes. later. The tagline for the show was Hill Street Blues in a Hospital with the same producers and writers. This show is probably best known for its final episode when we learn the entire series took place within the mind of an autistic boy. The show's use of crossovers and allusions to other TV series and characters created the concept of the Tommy Westfall universe, which postulates that a huge number of TV shows are in the same continuity. If you have a couple hours to kill, <laughs> Google this and go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> This show generated 13 Emmys out of 62 nominations, ran for six seasons, and had 137 episodes. Did you watch St. Elsewhere? Oh, of course I did. I didn't. Uh -huh. I might have to go back and watch it. Yeah. I'm sure it's available somewhere. Oh, oh, I'm sure it is. Stop right there, Mark. Uh, yeah. There are too many shows to talk about in one episode, so our next episode will cover the rest of the shows. In the meantime, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching.